fall is my favorite season, especially after the long, hot, humid summer in Tokyo. I feel like I can take a walk forever and explore the nature with kids by nourishing myself with the virtue of ottoman. Today, we are going to stack up a whole bunch of fall goodies, including sweet potatoes, kombucha squash, and mushrooms. As usual, my recipes are very simple using condiments you might already have in your kitchen. Also, I'll introduce you to how you can repurpose leftovers into totally different meals. It's gonna be a long video, but I hope you will stay with me till the end because I will save the good ones at the end. <laughs> We're gonna start with the ones which take the longest to cook. In this case, mushroom wakame seaweed mixed rice. First, rinse the rice and soak them into the water for one hour. I also like to mix the beans. This is optional, but feel free to add any beans and seeds you have on hand. I made one cup of rice and a third cup of beans. By the way, when I say rice on this channel, it usually indicates the sushi sticky rice. In the meantime, let's work on the star of today's video, fall seasonal vegetables. I am obsessed with these, but the rest of my family isn't. How about you guys? Wash sweet potato under the faucet. Please use vegetable scrub if you have one. Place them on the baking sheet with the parchment paper. We're gonna bake them in the oven. To me, these sweet potatoes are perfect size and shape. For kabocha squash, remove the seeds with your spoon. Kabocha is loaded with the better calcium, iron, fiber, and also packed with the vitamin C and B vitamins. I'm not a dietitian, but knowing these benefits just makes me feel like good serving it to my family. After cleaning the inside, wash them thoroughly, place it on the flat side down, cut from the top by rocking your knife back and forth. The skin is pretty hard, so make sure to use a good heavy knife. Some people microwave it for a couple minutes just to soften the skin before cutting it. Place them next to the sweet potato and drizzle your favorite oil. Save half of them for the miso soup later. Season with the Italian salt, which includes salt, pepper, oregano, basil, and red bell pepper powder. If you don't have one, just use salt and pepper. Dig in your hand and toss them to coat. I personally like the skin side down so that the skin can crisp up a little bit. Poke the sweet potatoes with your fork to prevent an explosion in the oven. I also make sure the sweet potato is wet before popping into the oven. Pop them into the oven 200 degrees Celsius for about one hour. Each oven works differently, especially mine is a microwave oven combo. So please apply to the temperature and time to your particular ovens. Now back to the rice, we have unsalted dried wakame seaweed. Soak them in water for 5 minutes to hydrate. Remember, it's gonna expand the volume by almost 3 times more after it's hydrated. For the mushroom, I will use shimeji mushroom and shiitake mushroom. Remove the stem and just separate them by hand. For the shiitake mushroom, thinly slice them. For most of the mushroom recipes I make on this channel, you can use any type of mushrooms. I understand some of the kinds are a little bit on the pricey side, so it's always nice to have some space to be creative for you guys. By the time the wakame seaweed should be done soaking, strain the liquid and squeeze them. The liquid is packed full of umami taste. We're gonna save the liquid and cook the rice with it. The rice and beans have been soaking for one hour. Drain water and remove the moisture as much as possible. Transfer to the rice cooker, add juice from the wakame seaweed, 
half tablespoon of sake, also known as rice wine, half tablespoon of mirin, and one teaspoon of comstock powder. Top up the water until you hit the line of one and a half cups of rice, then mix. The exact measurement will be listed on my blog. The link is on the description box below. Lastly, cover with the mushroom and cook it on the regular mode. While the rice cooker does its magic, chop up wakame seaweed. We want to mince them as it's crinkle more to the rice when we mix it. I forgot to tell you, when you buy the wakame seaweed, try to look for the ones without salt. If you only find the salted one, make sure to rinse the salt before soaking it into the water. The next one is a fall miso soup. Slice carrot into the coins or half moon. Slice carrot into coins or half moon. Remove the stem of enoki mushroom cut into half. Thinly slice oyster mushrooms and shiitake mushrooms. Kids are not fans of mushrooms either. I guess I just have to devour most of the meal preps by myself for this time. I already did the spring meal prep and kids friendly meal prep recipe. So I will include everything in the description box. To the pot, add one teaspoon of oil. I use rice brown oil, but use whatever you have on hand. Once it's heated, add carrot and mushrooms all together. Saute for about 5 minutes over mid heat. Sauteing it before adding liquid will create the extra depth to your miso soup. Once the veggies are sweat, add water. Make sure to scrape the brown bits. Add the rest of kabocha squash. Place dashi packet on top. You can also use dashi powder. Pop the lid and cook it for 4 minutes over mid heat. Oh. Kabocha has been in the oven for 15 minutes by now. Pierce with the fork and if it goes through without much resistance, it means it's cooked. Set it aside for now. <laughs> Back sweet potato into the oven and cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes. Back to the miso soup, shake the dashi packet and discard it from the soup. Pop the lid and cook it until the kabocha squash is fully cooked. Next up, we're gonna make a pickled plum mushroom stir fry. First, we're gonna slice up loads of mushrooms. I have enogi mushrooms, shimeji mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and oyster mushrooms. Papa, do you know? The combination of pickled plum and mushroom sounds a little bit intimidating if you haven't tried a pickled plum before, but you don't really taste the pickled plum. The mirin, which imparts the sweetness, will cut through the tartness of pickled plum. 
It's not too sour, too sweet, or too savory. Everything just melted together with a mushroom earthy taste. This is my husband's favorite out of the others in this video, so I guess you just want to try it for yourself. You can use any type of mushroom, but I would suggest using at least three different kinds to vary the texture and flavor. Take four pickle plums, remove the seeds and puree them by knife. Top it on the mushrooms. In goes one and a half tablespoon of mirin. ね。なるほど。フォークス。フォークス。すごい。よく聞こえたね。ちゃんと英語。何これ。これ梅干し。酸っぱいやつで。なんか。じゃあ。イチゴのシャ。ジャムみたいな。確かに。見た目はイチ
Do you still remember the rice we prepared at the beginning? Let's check on it. Make safe from the bottom to top motion. Add chopped wakame seaweed followed by a generous amount of tossed sesame seed. Close the lid and let it steam for a couple of minutes to infuse more flavor. You can sprinkle a cup of pinch of salt if it's needed. Since I enjoy it with other small side dishes, I would like to keep it as is. Back to the sweet potato, it's nice and golden. Flip and do another 4 minutes with the lid on. How long you should cook depends on how thick you cut the sweet potato, so always adjust the cooking time as it's needed. It's easy to burn so keep the low heat. Transfer the rice to the container and keep it in the freezer for 3 weeks. It's packed with flavor and the texture, especially with the beans. Mmm! Sweet potato should be cooked. Check it with your fork. When it's ready, drizzle 1 teaspoon of soy sauce off the heat immediately. Transfer to the container and sprinkle some aonori seaweed. This one reminds me of the seaweed potato chips I used to enjoy in my childhood. Very nostalgic. You can switch up the butter to different type of oil and also use black pepper as opposed to aonori seaweed. But the aonori is the best part in my opinion, so please try at least once. It's Lastly, we're gonna whip up kabocha and tomato curry stir fry. Thinly sliced onion. The onion is hidden star of this dish, so make sure to use it a lot. I have about 2 cups worth of sliced onion equivalent to 350 gram. And do the same for garlic. Remove the stem of the cherry tomato. If you have a ripe one, those would be perfect for this recipe. Heat olive oil over high heat, add onion and garlic. Sprinkle half teaspoon of salt. Cook it over mid-heat until it's caramelized. Splash some water as needed to degrease the pan. When it's cooked, drain the oil of canned tuna. Drain and rinse the chickpeas. When the onion is nice and brown, add tuna, chickpeas, and a half teaspoon of curry powder. Cook it over mid heat for another minute or so to open up the flavor. Then add cherry tomato and baked kabocha squash. Continue to heat it up until tomato is blistered. Lastly, season with 1 tablespoon of soy sauce. One more mix and off the heat. Always make sure to do the taste test. Mm. Mm. Oh, shit. This will last 4 days in the fridge. You can top it over the salad together with the drizzle of oil and lemon juice. Just as a side note, the kabuji squash tends to get dried as the time passes. If you have a leftovers, you can create a delicious soup, which is my absolute favorite. 
Jada pot add leftovers, followed by canned tomato and water. I just go by I especially how much you have leftovers will drastically change the taste. The more kabocha you have, it's gonna be sweeter. The more onion you have, it's gonna be more savory and bold in taste. Pop the lid and cook it for another 10 minutes or so. When the soup is thickened, add red miso paste. I personally love the combination of tomato and red miso. You don't taste the miso that much, but it will create the depth in taste. Starting with one tablespoon and add more by tasting it. Cook it for another five minutes or so with the lid on. I added mirin since it's a bit tart for kids, but this is totally optional. I didn't add the bouillon cube since it was flavorful enough. You can always play around with what you have and ready to be enjoy it. That's it for today. This is the longest video I ever created. If you're still with me, thank you for hanging out this far. I hope you find something you want to try. And if you make one, tag me on Instagram, Amiwa Japanese Cooking Class. Always enjoy to see your creations in your kitchen. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. またね。バイバイ。